collaboration Chimera is the code that we're using to simulate core collapse supernovae. Um, I'm going to give a brief background on neutrino-driven core collapse supernovae uh, and focus on uh, fluid instabilities that develop in, in these uh, explosions. Uh, talk about supernova simulations and the input physics that go into them. Uh, talk a little bit about the Chimera code and then uh, talk about uh, simulations uh, of neutrino-driven explosions uh, in two dimensions and three dimensions. And you know, I'll point out some key differences between the two and three dimensional simulations. Um, and uh, some preliminary results on a numerical resolution study uh, employing full, full physics uh, simulations of core collapse supernovae. Uh, and then conclude with, with, some, with a summary and some remarks. So uh, core collapse supernova is uh, basically the transition from uh, a massive star uh, to a compact object, object like a, a, a neutron star or a black hole. Uh, um, so a, a massive star evolves on, on tens of millions of years uh, until it dies in a supernova in about uh, one second and leaves behind a, a, a compact object. So at the end of its uh, evolutionary stage, the massive star is uh, composed of, it has an iron core in the center surrounded by lighter and lighter uh, elements. Uh, these uh, um, layers have been uh, constructed by, uh, uh, by burning to heavier and heavier elements until it reaches iron. Uh, iron cannot fuse to heavier elements and produce energy, so nuclear fusion stop in the, in, in the core. Uh, and the iron core is growing by uh, burning of, of silicon to, to, to iron. Until the, the core reaches the, the Chandrasekhar mass, where, uh, so this, this iron core is held up by uh, uh, pressure from degenerate electrons. Uh, at uh, 1.4 solar masses, the Chandrasekhar mass, the electrons are no longer able to, to withstand the, the pull of gravity and the core, uh, which is a few thousand kilometers, collapses down to uh, tens of, of kilometers. Uh, at that point, the density is on the order of 10 to the 14 uh, grams per, per cubic centimeter. At that point, the, uh, the equation of state stiffens uh, and halts collapse and a pressure perturbation is, uh, is, is uh, initiated and propagates uh, radially. And this pressure perturbation um, transitions into a shock wave uh, in very high densities. When this shock wave is, is uh, produced, uh, the temperature uh, increases and uh, the iron is broken up into free nu uh, uh, nucleons, neutrons and protons. Um, and uh, neutrinos are produced by cap electron capture on neutrons and protons. Um, as this shock propagates radially uh, to lower densities, the neutrinos become, uh, uh, or the, the material becomes transparent to neutrinos, and there's a, a, a burst of neutrinos uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, as the shock propagates uh, through this lower density region, the, the shock propagates further out, but it loses energy due to neutrino emission and also uh, due to dissociation of iron that is falling through the shock. And the shock stalls. Uh, it sits there for a while, it is heated, so neutrinos are pouring out of what's going to become the neutron star, and it deposits energy in this, in this region. It uh, excites uh, multidimensional uh, uh, flows, instabilities, and eventually the, the star is, uh, uh, so the, sh the shock is revived and the star explodes in, in a core collapse supernova and uh, disrupt, uh, so it, it disrupts the entire star and uh, distributes heavy elements into to the galaxy. Um, so uh, why do we care about core collapse supernovae? They are dominant source of heavy elements in the universe. Uh, they are laboratories for fundamental physics. You can uh, look at core collapse supernovae to probe our knowledge of gravitational physics, neutrino physics, and nuclear physics. 
and they're targeted by ground-based and space-borne uh, instruments uh, covering the entire electromagnetic spectrum and are also targeted by um, neutrino detectors and gravitational wave uh, detectors. So uh, to uh, aid in understanding all this wealth of uh, observational uh, data, uh, simulations are typically used to, to understand uh, and unravel the explosion mechanism, which is, is uh, uh, still being debated. And uh, also, um, gravitational wave detectors uh, use templates to, uh, to look for gravitational wave sig uh, signals in, in their uh, observations. And they uh, use uh, simulations to help look for uh, expected uh, signals. So, um, and uh, when we compute gravitational wave signals, uh, there is a, uh, a response in the gravitational wave signals uh, due to fluid uh, instabilities happening in, in the core. So if we are lucky to detect a galactic uh, supernova with the gravitational wave uh, observatories and simultaneously with the neutrino observatory, because uh, both uh, signals uh, tra travel uh, unhindered through the, the star, bringing information uh, about the dynamics uh, at the center of the exploding star. So uh, uh, modeling core collapse supernovae is a multiphysics uh, problem. It involves gravity, and uh, gravity is uh, uh, relativistic at this, uh, this scale, uh, hydrodynamics. Uh, neutrino transport and uh, nuclear uh, and particle physics inputs. The equation of state and uh, neutrino opacities are, are needed to, to, to get the dynamics uh, correctly. And in particular, neutrino transport is, is very important. 99% uh, of the gravitational energy that's released in a, in, uh, in, in a core collapse is, is radiated away by by neutrino emission. It's about only 1% uh, of the energy is ejected as, uh, as uh, kinetic energy in, in, in the matter. And uh, uh, um, the source is neut uh, neutrino deposition. So the challenge is to compute the, 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 the energy and momentum transfer between the radiation field and, and, the, and, the, and the fluid. So um, uh, as I mentioned, the shock, uh, shock wave is, uh, bounces off this, uh, this neutron star, uh, propagates radially. It loses energy due to neutrino emission and uh, dissociation. Um, it stalls at around 100 kilometers. And we have this setup where we have like a, a stalled shock uh, at 100, roughly 100 kilometers. Then we have uh, a neutron star between the, the proton-neutron star and the shock is, is the gain radius. So um, below the gain radius, you have net cooling by neutrinos. And above the gain radius, you have net heating by neutrinos. So neutrinos uh, capture on neutrons or protons and uh, produce uh, <coughs> uh, and, and deposit energy into, into, the, into the fluid. So the goal of a simulation is to study and compute this, uh, this uh, energy and momentum transfer, and actually lepton transfer as well. Uh, and um, to study how this energy, uh, so you have inflow material, there's a ramp pressure uh, on the shock, and this ramp pressure must be overcome by some, some pressure or stresses from, from below that will push the shock out. And it's not so, uh, it's not, uh, so easy. Um, so uh, neutrinos are not in, uh, in equilibrium with, the, with the, the fluid. So here is a plot of the, uh, showing the contours of the neutrino mean free path uh, versus radius and neutrino energy. And uh, this is the, the RMS energy of neutrinos uh, in this region. This region here is the, is the heating region, which is separated, uh, which is between the, 
the gain radius and, and, and the shock. And this is where we're, uh, this is the critical region where we compute the, the energy and momentum transfer. Um, and here, the, the mean free path is on the order of uh, from 10 kilometers down to 1,000 kilometers. So the mean free path is much larger than typical length scales uh, in the system. So uh, a kinetic description is, is warranted to, to, to study this, uh, this uh, exchange. Uh, so we had a talk just uh, before mine about the Boltzmann equation, which uh, uh, considers the, the phase-based density, which gives the number of, of uh, particles per uh, position space volume and momentum space uh, uh, volume. Uh, it is uh, governed by the Boltzmann equation, which is a balance between basically just advection, phase space advection, and, and collisions. So in this uh, a high energy density environment, uh, space time, there is curvature to space time. So that gives rise to some additional complexity on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we consider uh, Scattering of neutrinos on alpha particles and heavy uh, nuclei, uh, scattering on uh, electrons and positrons, neutrons and protons. This must be treated uh, inelastically. Uh, so we have uh, electron capture, so that's emission and absorption on free neutrons and protons and heavy elements. And then we also have some, some pair processes. <coughs> now, uh, Simulations uh, in, uh, in uh, so core collapse supernova simulations in spherical symmetry have been carried out in, uh, uh, with full physics, solving the Boltzmann transport equation, uh, employing general relativity and all the neutrino matter interactions that we think are important. And this plot shows the, the shock radius versus time after shock formation. Uh, in the fully relativistic case, and in uh, an approximate uh, Newtonian uh, uh, non-relativistic uh, case. And in both cases, uh, the shock reaches a, a maximum and then starts to, to recede. And there is no uh, explosion uh, in general. This is a general. So for the lowest mass presenters, you can achieve uh, explosions. But in, in general, for higher mass uh, stars, uh, you don't achieve any explosion when you uh, simulate in, in spherical symmetry. So multidimensional effects are, are important. So uh, simulations must be done in, in, in multi-D. So uh, here, uh, this uh, region between the, <coughs> uh, so this heating region between the, the shock and the proton-neutron star is, uh, so it's continually heating in, in this layer and heats up the material and it becomes convectively unstable, so neutrino-driven convection sets in. Uh, in addition, uh, there is uh, an instability in the shock wave itself that leads to <coughs> large-scale uh, sloshing motions of, of the shock. And uh, both of these uh, instabilities uh, leads to both, uh, or simultaneously, simultaneous upflow and, and downflow, so, which is different from what you can get in, in spherical symmetry. In spherical symmetry, if you would get to a situation where you would have enough energy to, to push the shock out, uh, so the neutrino radiation field has, has two components. It has a diffusive component and also an accretion component. So accretion sustains the neutrino luminosity, but if the shock is propagating outward, you shut off the neutrino luminosity due to accretion, and reduce, and, and there is like a, a self-regulating uh, effect. But in multi-D, uh, you can have these downdrafts that are fairly energetic that feed the neutrino radiation field continuously. And you can have a buildup of explosion more efficiently. So the standing accretion shock instability called uh, short SASI and neutrino-driven convection typically develop uh, in different uh, regimes, and it, de it depends on the, basically the structure of the progenitor. If you consider the, the advection time as the time uh, a parcel spends between the shock and the, and the gain radius, 
and uh, the buoyancy time, the time for convective uh, bubbles to, to, to develop. Uh, if this advection time is fast, uh, perturbations will be just swept into the into the gain layer, and uh, and in that case, the the standing accretion shock instability develops. So, <clears throat> simulations have shown that when this this ratio is less than three, then standing accretion shock instability will will dominate. Typically, that's for for more massive uh, stars, and uh, for this parameter larger than three, uh, neutrino driven convection will will develop. And both uh, of these instabilities uh, lead to non-radial mass motions and, 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 uh, and turbulence below the shock, which uh, are becoming, we're realizing that this is becoming important to understand the explosion mechanism. Uh, one uh, effect is that uh, it, these instabilities pushes the, the shock to larger radii. And, uh, this leads to an increased residence time of fluid elements in, in the heating region and a more efficient energy transfer. Uh, another uh, effect is uh, just uh, Reynolds stresses due to, to uh, uh, non or, uh, turbulent motions or non-radial motions. So in this, in this study uh, by Couch and, and Ott, they uh, kept the neutrino heating rate at the, at the same rate, but perturbed the, the material ahead of the shock in different ways to excite weaker and stronger uh, turbulence. And they found that uh, the turbulence uh, uh, was as, uh, con contributing significantly to the stresses below the shock. <clears throat> So um, more energetic uh, multidimensional flows were uh, favorable to, to explosion. Um, and uh, this is a study by, uh, uh, by Hanke et al. that uh, looked at uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional uh, simulations. And they computed the spectra of the, of the kinetic energy in two-dimensional simulations and in three-dimensional simulations. And, uh, the first talk in this session talked about the inverse cascade of in, in two-dimensional turbulence. And this uh, seems to be a, an important effect and a detrimental effect for 2D simulations because uh, so the, typically the, so the, both the SASI and the neutrino-driven convection uh, inject uh, energy at, at, uh, at the scale here and in two-dimensional simulations, this inverse cascade leads to accumulation on large scales. Uh, in 3D, uh, you have the, the correct uh, direction of the, of the cascade. And if you compare uh, 2D and 3D simulations, the 2D simulations are typically characterized by, by large scale uh, uh, plumes, whereas in, in, in the 3D, the, the, the forward uh, cascade uh, leads to more of a fragmentation of large-scale structures um, during the explosion. So these, these effects, uh, the, both the neutrino-driven no, uh, convection and, and the standing increased shock instability, the, the stresses, as well as uh, this effect of, uh, 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 between 2D and 3D have been uh, studied uh, using uh, uh, quite simplified uh, uh, parameterized models. Uh, in, in particular, the neutrino physics has been uh, simplified uh, a lot. But they're very important because they, they, you can uh, run a lot more simulations and, and uh, vary parameters in a controlled way to gain uh, this nice uh, insight. Uh, so we are running, we have in the Camera code, we're running multidimensional supernova simulations uh, with spectral neutrino transport. Uh, so we, Camera ha consists of, of three heads. It has hydrodynamics, a nuclear network, and radiation transport. The hydrodynamics is a shock capturing PPM implementation. Uh, it uses a moving grid to follow uh, increase or the, 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 the concentration of mass uh, uh, during collapse. Uh, 
And uh, in multi-D, the solving the Boltzmann equation is, is very expensive. Uh, it has not been done in full uh, 3D yet, and we're solving uh, for angular moments of the, of the distribution function in a flux-limited diffusion uh, approach in, in, in Chimera. But it uses uh, uh, a modern opacity set. It includes relativistic corrections uh, that are necessary. It also approximates the transport in a ray-by-ray -ray approximation, which is it solves in a spherically polar coordinate system. It solves um, uh, spherically symmetric uh, transport problems along uh, each uh, radial ray. This is done for computational expediency, but it's an approximation that we're working to, to get rid of. Uh, so uh, uh, for hydro, just some tests showing decent uh, 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 capturing of, uh, of, of shock and entropy wave uh, interactions, uh, comparison with the, 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 the Boltzmann code, is, is, this is the shock radius versus time after bounce. So some, some neutrino quantities. So this approximation is, is, uh, is reasonable. Uh, in 2D simulations, uh, we run simulations in axial symmetry across a range of progenitors. Uh, and we see neutrino-driven explosions in, in all these uh, models. And the neutrino-driven uh, explosions are initiated here, comparing 1D shock trajectories and 2D shock trajectories. This is about the time when fluid instabilities become uh, nonlinear, and this aid in, 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 in the development of explosions. Uh, have a, we've done simulations in 3D as well. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, here, uh, so just going back, uh, this shows the fluid entropy at the end of a simulation. Uh, which is, is, is characterized by a few ex large expanding hot bubbles. And between these hot bubbles, there is downflows that continue to feed the, 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 the neutrino radiation by uh, the accretion uh, uh, component. Um, now comparing the, the shock trajectories uh, for 1D, 2D, and 3D, we see that uh, the 3D shock trajectories uh, um, grow uh, a little bit slower than, uh, than 2D. And this, this is uh, similar uh, to the observation that was seen in the, uh, in the parameterized uh, models. Uh, so we believe that uh, the, the fundamental difference between 2D and 3D turbulence is, 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 is contributing to, to this. Uh, initially, uh, this, this showed uh, entropy uh, uh, distributions in, in 3D and in 2D. The instability set in at about the, about the same, uh, same time, but it grows more forcefully in, in 2D. But in both cases, the explosion is associated with large, uh, large bubbles. Uh, now looking at the... Uh, the neutrino heating efficiency comparing 2D and 3D. So neutrino heating efficiency is, is the net energy deposition by neutrinos divided by, uh, in, the, in this gain region, divided by how much is, is coming into the gain region from, from below. And we see that, uh, so as you increase the, the heating efficiency, uh, you, you, push, uh, you get closer to, to explosion. And the 2D models have uh, a higher, overall higher neutrino heating efficiency. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, the advection time through the, the gain layer uh, over the, 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 the heating time scale uh, gives an indication on how long uh, um, a, a fluid parcel is, is uh, subject to neutrino radiation. And neutrino, this, this, when this ratio is, is uh, approaching and increases one, that's when you, you typically see a runaway explosion. And you see uh, in uh, 2D simulations, this is also uh, higher. 
Now, looking at uh, the turbulent uh, kinetic energy, which we just compute as anything that's not uh, uh, part of the mean radial flow, um, we see that in 2D it is much higher than, uh, than in, in 3D. So uh, this will contribute to a, a higher Reynolds stress in, in, in 2D simulations. So looking at the explosion energy, um, we also see that in 2D the explosion energy is, is much higher at this point than in the 3D simulation. Now we learned from running 2D simulations that we need to run to very long times to, to get the final explosion energy. So this, this is not uh, any indication of what the final explosion energy is, but we see that uh, the 2D is growing much faster. So uh, I, I think it's reasonable to, 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 it's a good guess that uh, the 3D will be lower. Okay, so to try to understand the impact of resolution, uh, uh, we have started a numerical resolution study. These are very preliminary results, but I want to show them uh, uh, anyway. Our objective is to uh, understand the energy and momentum transport in uh, supernova as it, as it, as it uh, develops and to look at uh, models with different resolutions. And we want to employ uh, full physics simulations. So this is uh, a, a, um, like a follow-up study to this very nice paper that looked at, uh, at this same, uh, same um, picture or same question uh, using a very parameterized model. So they used parameterized neutrino heating and cooling and a fixed inner and outer as inner boundary and a fixed accretion rate. Now in, we know from uh, self-consistent models that the accretion down onto the proton-neutron star is, is, is also uh, regulating the, the, the neutrino output. So we want to, to include that in the model. So we've run models uh, in a reduced 3D domain uh, using a variety of, uh, of angular resolutions. And this, this resolution here is what, was, what we used in this uh, 3D simulation that I just uh, showed. Uh, so in, in the, as we increase the resolution, we see that the, the average shock radius is, is, is decreasing, and this leads to a, a higher heating efficiency. Uh, so if we look also at the kinetic energy, on average, the, the low resolution model has higher kinetic energy than the higher resolution model. And if we look here at the, at the Reynolds stresses, at the different times during the simulation. Uh, so this is the Reynolds stress divided by the, by the pressure, so it gives like a relative contribution to the, to the stress uh, compared to the, the thermal pressure. And uh, it becomes uh, significant uh, when this fluid flow is, is highly nonlinear. And you can also see that in 3D, in the, in the low resolution model, the, the stresses are on average uh, higher than in, in the higher resolution uh, models. So uh, now if we look at compute energy uh, spectra over a, a temporal in, interval here, we see that this is not uh, resolved. Uh, and also for the low resolution models, there is an accumulation of, of, uh, of power at, lar or at, at, at large scales. As we increase the resolution, the, the power is, 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 is less um, distributed to, to, to smaller scales. Uh, and this was also seen in this, uh, in this paper uh, and, and discussed there um, in the context of more parameterized uh, uh, models. And looking at the di distribution of entropy, we see that uh, for the lowest resolution, we have clearly formed uh, these, these large-scale bubbles, but as we increase the resolution, they seem to be, be shredded by, by multi-D. Uh, uh, they're more turbulent. Okay, so I don't think, I'm not sure how much time do I have. Right. It's okay? What? 
I'm, I'm out of time? Oh, OK. Oh, OK. I just, this, is just, this is the last slide before the. Just wanted to show uh, gravitational wave signals from. Uh, this is from 2D explosion si uh, simulations, though. So you want to keep that in, in mind. But um, this shows the, the gravitational wave amplitude as it would be observed uh, on Earth. Uh, or if the supernova was 10 kiloparsec away. And you can see uh, dynamics from the, from the supernova, or you can see the supernova dynamics imprinted in the gravitational wave signals. Initially, there is a, as the shock uh, expands into the stellar mantle, it sets up a, a, a configuration that is uh, um, unstable to convection. This is pro a prompt convection that dies out quickly. And you can see, um, see this in the, in, the, in the signal. Then there is a quiescent phase until the, the neutrino uh, driven convection or the standing accretion shock instability in, induce. So there is like flows that uh, impinge on the proton neutron star and, and induce oscillations in the proton neutron star. And, and they, they lead to the strongest part of the signal. And then as the explosion sets in, there is a, is a, a an offset, a tail, uh, which is due to asymmetry in, in, in the mass distribution. And then as uh, the explosion is, is really going and, and these uh, downflows onto the proton-neutron star uh, cease, uh, you, you, you see this, this stochastic nature on the, on, the, on the signal disappears and you have this smooth curve. So uh, one can... Uh, see uh, responses to supernova dynamics in the gravitational wave signal, and that, that's, uh, that's interesting. OK, so this is my summary. I've shown uh, multi-D simulations of neutrino-driven explosions. Uh, Non-radial flows uh, tend to improve conditions for explosions compared to 1D simulations uh, due to neutrino-driven convection and the standing accretion shock instability. Uh, the fluid experiences longer exposure to neutrino driven expo uh, exp uh, neutri <laughs> neutrino radiation due to these uh, effects. And also, Reynolds stresses seem to, to help push the, the shock out. The ultimate driver is the gravitational energy that is uh, in, the, in the collapsing star. So for uh, a non-radial shock, uh, it can effectively transform radial kinetic energy into non-radial kinetic energy. And also, it's also what's driving the, the neutrino radiation. Now, the inverse cascade in 2D seem to uh, result in over-energy energetic explosions. And we need to do 3D simulations. Um, and uh, the explosion uh, dynamics uh, provides a response in the gravitational wave signal. So. Uh, just want to thank uh, collaborators and uh, funding agencies and uh, all of you for your attention. <laughs>